Welcome to day seven of the 30 day My Defer Sock Analyst Challenge, which is a challenge that I created for the sole purpose of helping aspiring sock analysts obtain practical experience in 30 days. If you're interested in following along with this challenge, I would highly recommend that you pause this video and start from day one if you haven't done so already. By the end of this video, you'll have an Elastic Agent installed onto your Windows server that we created back in day five. And we will also be setting up our own fleet server so our Windows server can enroll into our fleet for centralized management. Let's get started. The first thing that we'll do here is create another server to act as our fleet server. So I'll click on deploy on the top right corner, click on deploy new server, and I will select Toronto. And let's select Ubuntu 22.04. This one doesn't really need to be too, too beefy as well. So I'll just leave it as one CPU, four gigs. We don't need auto backups. We don't need IPv6, but I will select virtual private cloud 2.0 and do make sure that our network is selected. Our IP address is 172.31.0.4. And for the firewall group, I'll select, uh, you know what, let's, let's just leave it as is for now. And in this, I'll say my DFIR dash fleet dash server and i'll click on deploy now while this is creating let's head over to our web gui which again is our public ip address on port 5601 once you're in the web gui you want to select the hamburger icon on the left hand side scroll all the way down and you want to select fleet under management and we'll get presented with this big blue button saying add fleet server that's what we want to do and we have two options here, quick start and advanced. We'll go for the quick start, which is perfectly fine for our 30 day challenge. But if you're doing this for a production environment, it is highly likely you should do advanced. For the name, I'll type in my DFIR dash fleet dash server. For the URL, I'll specify the public IP of the virtual machine there, which is 155.138.155.31. Copy that and I'll paste it in here. Do note that it says it uses port 8220 by default. I'll click on generate fleet server policy. Invalid URL must be an HTTPS URL. No worries, type in HTTPS colon slash slash. Click on generate. After a couple seconds, we see fleet server policy created. Let's see here. The token has been generated, host configured at 155.138, which is our public IP address. Install fleet server to a centralized host. So what we need to do is copy this and then paste that into our fleet server Ubuntu virtual machine that we are spinning up. Let's see if we can access this here. It has been four minutes. So let's click on view console and look at that. It's prompting us to log in. So that's good news. Copy the IP address. I'll open up another PowerShell instance. Type in SSH, the username, which is root at the IP address and hit enter. Type in yes, I want to connect. And for the password, let's go ahead and copy that and paste that in there. Now we're inside the mydefer fleet server. Before I paste in the actual policy, I'm going to update our repositories. App get update and apt get upgrade dash y. While this is downloading, let's go over and copy our policy right here and click on enter, clear with the screen and let's paste that in. It says Elastic Agent will be installed at opt Elastic Agent and will run as a service. Do you want to continue? Yes, I do. While this waits to enroll, let's head back over to our Elastic and we do see that it is confirming connection here. Thinking about it now, I do realize that our firewall rule is only allowing our public IP address. So what we need to do here is copy our public IP address from our fleet server and head over to products, network, firewall under the 30 day my D for sock challenge. We want to allow, I'll just allow everything again for port range one through 65,000. I'll click on custom and let's enter in our public IP address of our fleet server. Click on the plus button and hope, oh, we got a bunch of errors here. So it says fleet server failed. Timed out waiting for fleet server to start. This is likely because it wasn't able to connect to our elastic search. Now let's go ahead and rerun this again. I'll clear out the screen. And actually let's go back into our elastic 
agent directory, hit the up arrow key a couple times until we get the sudo dot slash elastic agent install. And then we want to say yes. And now it says waiting for enroll. Hopefully this works here. Also, let's modify our firewall rule on our elk server by typing in UFW allow 9200 because this is our port for Elasticsearch. And ooh, perfect. Successfully enrolled the Elastic agent. Now, let's quickly recap what just happened because there was a lot of troubleshooting going on. So, first and foremost, I went ahead and noticed that our firewall rule was very restrictive and it was only allowing our public IP address to access our Elk server. Now with the fleet server, it needs to access our Elk server as well, or well, more specifically, it needs to access Elasticsearch. And Elasticsearch by default listens on port 9200. What that meant was that I needed to modify our firewall rules to allow our fleet server to communicate with our Elk server. And then we modified the actual virtual machines firewall using UFW to allow incoming connections towards port 9200, which again is what Elasticsearch listens on by default. And by doing that, we are now able to enroll our fleet server. And as you can see, it says fleet server connected. This is exactly what we want to see. I'll click on continue enrolling Elastic Agent. And now we can start adding some agents onto our Windows server. What type of host do you want to monitor? Let's name this my default-windows-policy. By default, it says collect system logs and metrics. And then we'll click on create policy. Scrolling down, we have Linux, Mac, Windows. So I'll select Windows because we want to install this on our Windows server that we just spun up. I'll copy this out. And it does say root privileges required, AKA administrator privileges. Back to our Vulture, let's go into our dashboards and over to my dfir-win-stevenrocks, which is my Windows machine. I'll click on the view console and let's open up PowerShell. Now by default with Windows Server, you will be logged in using the account administrator. So in theory, you should have administrator privileges already, but just in case, I'll right click Windows PowerShell and run as administrator. And then I'll click on this arrow button, click on the clipboard and let's paste it in. Click on paste and ooh, it's going out and downloading and retrieving that agent. After waiting for a while, it finally finished downloading and let me go ahead and expand this here. Now you might need to hit enter every now and then just to make sure that everything is still moving. But eventually you'll see Elastic Agent will be installed at C Program Files Elastic Agent and will run as a service. Do you want to continue? Yes. We have the waiting for enrollment. And just as an FYI, the agents need to have the ability to connect to the fleet server. So if you have a firewall in front of your fleet server that is permitting only your public IP address, for example, then your Windows server or any other agents wouldn't be able to connect to it. So just keep that in mind. And we do get an error. So it says enroll command failed for unknown reason. Okay, that's interesting. Let's see, what do we have here? Fail to enroll, fail to execute request to fleet server on this port. It's kind of ironic that I mentioned about network connections and then this failed. So that might be a key reason as to why this failed. So how about we try this? I'll copy this IP address, which is the public IP of my fleet server. And then let's try pinging it. So we do have connection, that's good. But is the port opened for our fleet server? Let's search up fleet server. And we should be able to see some of the ports here. Let's click on deploy on premise, scrolling down. And here's all of the default port assignments. So from our elastic agent towards our fleet server, it's on to port 8220. Now we do know that there is no firewall in front of our fleet server. However, though, we do need to modify the firewall within the virtual machine itself. So I'll clear out the screen and type in UFW. Now do keep in mind, this is my fleet server and it is not my Elk server. So UFW allow and the port I believe was 8220. Let's double check that here. 8220, hit enter and let's try this again. 
I'll expand this. I'll clear out the screen and let's rerun this. Elastic agent, yes. Just as an FYI, you can hit the up arrow key a couple of times to rerun the same command. And we're still getting an error. Perfect. This is beautiful because now we can actually start troubleshooting. Now we do also see that our agent is attempting to enroll on port 443. So let's go ahead and make that change into our firewall for our fleet server as well. So I'll type in UFW allow 443. Now let's try it again. I'll hit the up arrow key to rerun the command and hit enter. Type in Y for yes. And if this fails, let's continue troubleshooting. So let's take a look here. Error, fail to enroll, fail to execute request to fleet server. Dial TCP 155.138. No connection could be made because the target machine activity refused it. Just to make sure, I am going to double check my Vulture and let's go into my compute and our fleet server, go under settings, go under firewall, and there is no firewall here. All right, after some food, I just realized that I am so silly. <laughs> the reason why we are not able to enroll our agent into our fleet server is because of the following. You wanna head over to your Elastic Web GUI and click on the hamburger icon. Scroll all the way down, click on fleet under management. And under our fleet homepage, you wanna select settings. And looking at our My DFIR fleet server, you might notice that it has port 443. And I can't believe I did not catch this, but by default, it is using 8220. So what we need to do here is click on this pencil icon and let's remove 443 and change this to 8220. Save and apply settings, save and deploy. And now what we wanna do is head over to our Windows machine and I'll modify this URL to remove 443 and put in 8220. Now let's hit enter and see what happens. And we do get another fail to enroll error. But if we take a look, it says X509 certificate signed by unknown authority. Now this is because we did do a self-signed certificate. To bypass this error, all we need to do is include dash dash in secure, hit enter, and Y. And <laughs> look at that. Perfect. Elastic Agent has successfully installed. Now, if you're doing this in a production environment, rather than doing the quick start option, you would select advanced, and then you would also create your own certificate authority. We don't do that in this particular challenge. However, if you're interested in doing that, Level Effect has a great resource on walking you through on how you can actually do that. And I'll leave a link down below for you if you're interested. Now let's head over to our Elastic and let's click on agents and look at that we have our host mydfir-win-stevenrocks so we know for a fact that our windows server successfully enrolled into our fleet if i click on the hamburger icon go over to discover we should see some logs out of curiosity what if i search up steven rocks and we do have our agent name text here so this right here has some of the logs containing our Windows server. That is pretty cool. And hey, look at that, event code 4625. If you don't remember what that is, let's search this up really quickly. Event 4625, and this says an account failed to log on. So we're capturing authentication logs right now. And in later videos, we'll dive deeper into these logs. You have successfully installed the Elastic Agent onto your Windows server machine up in the cloud and have also enrolled it into the fleet. In the next video, I'll go over a powerful Windows service that will monitor and log system activity on a Windows machine called Sysmon. As a reminder, I'll be doing a giveaway where one lucky winner will win a free voucher for the MyD for SOC Analyst course. And additionally, there will be three one month passes for Try Hack Me up for grabs. Details are provided in the description down below. And if you're an aspiring SOC analyst, I would highly encourage you try and participate so you can level up your practical skills. Thank you so much for watching and subscribe if you want to. Remember to stay curious and do things differently.